Never mind weeks. The COVID-19 pandemic is evolving from hour to hour. In recent days, there's been all kinds of speculation about whether any pre-existing medicines could be helpful as adjunctive treatment for COVID-19, and the reason you're probably watching this at least six feet apart from the next person. Two related pharmacologic classes that have come up in the debate are the ACE inhibitors and the angiotensin receptor blockers. But as of this writing, there are mixed opinions as to whether these drugs are helpful or hurtful. My name is Byron Liu. I'm an onco-hospitalist at Cooper University Hospital in Camden, New Jersey. Earlier today, I tried to read up on the physiologic rationale for why ACE inhibitors and ARBs might affect the natural history of coronavirus and was quickly overwhelmed. But having read about poorly explained vascular events and odd tissue injury, it felt like there might be more going on than just ARDS. So I reached out to Dr. Jordana Cohen, academic nephrologist and epidemiologist at the University of Pennsylvania, for some clarifications as to the underlying mechanisms and why this debate is actually happening. Hi, Jordy. So who are our players here? We have good old ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. She's that molecule that takes angiotensin 1, that's angiotensin 1 with a Roman numeral, and changes it to the much more active angiotensin 2. And for the most part, ACE tends to be localized in the lung and gut tissue. And angiotensin 2 is one of the active players in the RAS cascade, right? Correct. And down the line, that causes vasoconstriction and renal salt reuptake like we all learned in med school. But what we don't really get a lot about is what happens to angiotensin II afterwards. But every story has an ending, right? Right. So it turns out ACE has a less famous cousin, ACE2. And ACE2 has a much more relaxed vibe. ACE2's purpose is to take up angiotensin II with a Roman numeral and make like six other molecules the confusingly named angiotensins 1 through 7. Note that these do not have Roman numerals, and they are distinct from the original big players in the RAS cascade. In contrast to angiotensin 2, all six of these breakdown molecules are vasodilatory. And so it's thought that in many cases, angiotensin 1 through 7 are relatively lung protective, and therefore ACE2 is thought to be lung protective. This has been seen in mouse models of viral pneumonias. So how do ACE inhibitors and ARBs affect the system? ACE inhibitors directly stop ACE from working, and ARBs block the action of angiotensin II at a more downstream location. The effect in either case is to lessen the power of the RAS cascade, leading to less vasoconstriction, less salt retention, and to lower blood pressures. Okay, so after a while, how does the body then respond to this blockade? Much like alcoholics upregulate GABA expression because their existing receptors are saturated, people on ACE inhibitors and ARBs likely have upregulation of both ACE and ACE2. Like, they make more of it in response. This has also been previously demonstrated in rat models, and there's also possibly decreased degradation of existing ACE2. Long story short, the net effect here is that people who are already on an ACE inhibitor and ARB likely have relatively higher expression of ACE2. So what does any of this have to do with the coronavirus? So here's the kicker. The cellular entry receptor for SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is ACE2. Ah, so this is where some of the worry is coming from. If there's more ACE2 around, doesn't that make it easier for SARS-2 coronavirus to gain entry and continue replicating? That is a concern, yes. But like we said before, ACE2 seems to have a lung protective effect in general. High ACE2 may theoretically increase the ease of viral replication. So we don't actually know which effect is worse. But this is one of the physiologic mechanisms that's really worth investigating. Also, I bet the story is even more complicated, because this is kind of a renal topic, and renal is never simple. <laughs> Very true. So another fun thing about ACE2 is that it comes in two forms. The one we've mostly been talking about is membrane-bound ACE2. That is, it's attached to pneumocytes and enterocytes. This is what coronavirus can use for cell entry. The other form is soluble ACE2 that circulates. Obviously, since it's floating around, the coronavirus can't use it to enter anything. Could the circulating soluble ACE2 act as a decoy even? Maybe. We don't know. And we don't know if ACE inhibition or angiotensin receptor blockade alter the ratio of membrane-bound versus soluble ACE2 upregulation. We also don't really know if the membrane-bound ACE2 being taken out of circulation by corona endocytosis grossly affects the production of angiotensin 1 through 7. 
So there's a lot of questions here, but it seems like the novel coronavirus interferes with a pretty key homeostatic system. But on the flip side, I guess that may give us more targets to think through rational drug treatments. Yeah. So, for example, one potential approach here focuses on increasing the amount of soluble ACE2 over membrane-bound ACE2. It's raining, man. Both to decoy the virus and to maximize ACE2's lung protective effect to minimize the risk of acute lung injury, or frank ARDS. So at the time of this recording, there's a pilot randomized trial for actually just giving recombinant ACE2 with 24 patients already enrolled. There's also a trial that's about to start enrolling patients to randomize them to losartan versus placebo. Going forward, we're not sure just yet of how giving, say, lisinopril or valsartan might affect outcomes in an acute clinical setting, or whether to hold these for people who are on chronic treatment. Most societies are not recommending changes either way as of yet. Yeah, and this conversation is seriously changing on a daily basis. So tomorrow we might be totally wrong. Science! So a great resource that I adapted this from was NEFJC, the Online Nephrology Journal Club. Links to all the existing references as of March 17, 2020, below. Happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way! Did you find this video helpful or illuminating? Leave any feedback or commentary below. And as they ask you to do on the YouTubes, hit like and subscribe and follow us on Twitter. This has been a production of I Am Sketchpad.